Let's get into our subject, criminal law. Before going to law school, many of us probably thought of criminal law as pretty much the same thing as law itself. The law is what has to be obeyed. Those who don't obey break the law and have to go to jail. Now we know better. After taking torts and contracts, we know there's a lot of law that isn't criminal law. It's time to ask, what makes a law a part of the criminal law? The key to distinguishing criminal law from other law is to look at the consequence attached to a violation. The remedy for a breach of contract is typically money damages. The idea is to give the aggrieved party the benefit of her bargain. The remedy for a tort is, again, money damages in the typical case. The idea is to compensate the victim, to restore the victim to the condition she would have been in but for the tortfeasor's conduct. There are other private law remedies which are covered in the upper level elective course by that name, remedies. There is a distinctive consequence imposed for an offense under the criminal law. It is punishment. Criminal punishment is not meant to compensate a victim of the offense. Some criminal offenses involve no victim. Criminal punishment is not meant to give anyone the benefit of a bargain. Our question was, what is criminal law? And the answer we get is that it is the law that people can be punished for disobeying. That answer raises yet another question. What do we mean by punishment? Or more to the point, what is distinctive about criminal punishment? First, a punishment is not a criminal punishment unless it is administered by a government agent who is following some duly authorized procedure. A lynch mob can punish, but it cannot administer criminal punishment. We can say that punishment is officially administered suffering. This raises another question. How does punishment differ from a tax or a fee? These are officially administered and unwelcome because they hurt us in the pocketbook. The answer is that criminal punishment serves a certain expressive function that taxes and fees do not. Expressive of what? Criminal punishment is meant to express certain emotions. It is meant to express society's hatred of the offender's conduct. It is meant to express society's fear of the offender. Criminal punishment is meant to express society's contempt for what the offender has done. If that is what distinguishes fees and taxes from punishment, why not simply express those feelings by declaring them? It hurts to be told that society hates us, fears us, finds us contemptible for something we've done. Why inflict further suffering? Isn't there enough suffering already in this veil of tears? Consider the Skimmington or Skimmington Ride, a traditional demonstration of moral disapproval of an offender. The intent was public humiliation. A Skimmington generally took the form of a rowdy parade with effigies of the offender and noisy clattering of pots and pans. In short, a shaming ritual. Shouldn't a public shaming be enough? Or is it too quickly forgotten? once the clattering stops. In Nathaniel Hawthorne's novel, The Scarlet Letter, the heroine, Hester Prynne, was shamed in a more permanent way. She had to wear the letter A for adulteress on her bodice for the rest of her days. Surely that fully served the expressive function. Why not make offenders wear shameful letters for a while? In Tudor, England, Branding was a commonplace way of stigmatizing criminals. Not as conspicuous as Hester Prynne's Scarlet Letter A, but more permanent. Not to mention, a lot more painful to put on. You can see the problem here. One man's Scarlet Letter is another man's red badge of courage. 
Branding, tattooing, shaming rituals, and similar physical punishments are still found in many parts of the world. But the typical and conventional mode of punishment today, worldwide, is confinement in prison. The offender not only loses her liberty, her family may be deprived of a caregiver and breadwinner. And this is additional to the stigma of the criminal conviction itself, which may follow the offender for the rest of her life. Why punish this way? What justifies doing it?